Welcome to Kingdom Authority with James Alford, your source for insight on spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. Be prepared for your eyes to be opened like never before and walk in the power of God's kingdom. Here is your host, James Alford. You have reached the Kingdom Authority broadcast. I'm excited today. I have an amazing, amazing uh, woman of God who's on the podcast today. She is a person who has been in the occult, has dealt with new age, uh, new age thinking, uh, new age mindsets, but the power of God delivered her from that. And now she's here to tell the story of how God brought her out of darkness into the light. But before we get into the discussion for today, I want to tell you about my documentary called The Light and the Darkness. Some of you may have watched it, but if you have not, I want to encourage you to go see it. We're talking about deliverance. We're talking about witchcraft and the power of the name of Jesus. I tell you what, you don't want to miss it. So make sure you check us out with the film. Um, you can go to Amazon and watch it, or you can go to my website at jamesalfred.org. Well, I'm so excited. Today I have Miss Teresa Yaneris on our podcast today. How are you doing today? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on. You know, um, I met you about a year and a half ago when we first uh, rolled out the documentary, The Light and the Darkness. And I was very, very blessed to hear how God was dealing with you being a person who was in the occult, a person who was, you know, doing new age practices and each, even had a a show on YouTube that was fairly successful with these types of teachings. And somehow God, the Holy Spirit worked his way into your life, completely transformed you. And now you're living for Christ. Yeah. It's a funny Amazing. thing. It's a funny thing to do it so publicly, <laughs> right? <laughs> I had a YouTube channel. Yeah. For like three or four years and then all of the deliverance happened. So it was all very public. It's very interesting. Right. But you, but you had a level of success when you were doing things for the devil, correct? I had a lot of success, actually. Yeah. Right. So, so you you were on your podcast. You were talking about the occult. You were talking about new age teachings. Had a lot of success. A lot of subscribers. Um, can you kind of tell me what what happened um, to kind of begin the process of bringing you pulling you away from that? Yeah, I got really deeply involved in the occult. I was raised Catholic initially, and I was confirmed in the Catholic Church. I was raised in a very faith-filled family. And for me, I always believed in God. But as far as my personal relationship with Christ, that always kind of confused me. Why did why did Jesus have to die for my sins? That kind of, Those questions were, were present for me as a child. So I've, I've always believed in God, but as far as Jesus, that was always a stumbling block for me. And when I was in college, I fell away from the faith because I was angry at authoritarian religions, which mm -hmm. I literally threw the baby out with the bathwater, kind of went on my own sure. way. And then by the time sure. I was about 25, I stumbled into some more of this kind of universalist new age belief systems, quantum physics, those kinds of things. And at a base level, it's just science. But then you start to open your mind up to uh, these other possibilities, things like uh, transcendental meditation and altered states of consciousness and things like that. Well, what really took me down the rabbit hole was this book that my father gave me uh, on reincarnation. He was at the time mm -hmm. after him and my mom got divorced, he started dating this woman who was a past life regressionist. And he started learning about reincarnation and gives me this book. And I'm reading this book and I start to have out of body experiences. I, I, and I started to get involved in the occult then because I started to wonder what is this beyond reality? And it really just kind of took me into this world where anything could happen. And I think that this is a very common way for Satan to attack people is they we're looking for answers deep down inside. We have a desire to know God. And so what we start to do, some of us sometimes, you know, we start to look into the knowledge of the world. And that's what I did. I started to look into the knowledge of the world and I started to write a book and I published a book called What is Magic? You can buy it on Amazon. But it was me attempting to reconcile my Catholic belief systems with New Age methodologies and, and teachings, which, spoiler alert, you can't reconcile them. But I sure right. as heck tried. Um, I think. So, so, uh -huh. so you went so far as to even publish a book 
on these things. Yes, and I got involved in tarot cards. I started reading tarot cards. I got into divination. And for me, the the crux of the beginning of this, and this is what I describe to people who are either in the occult or have come out of it, is that when you find something that works, that is a red flag. It should be a red flag. When you are using these new age items, you know, divination tools, things like that, and you find that they work. And this is, you touched on this mm-hmm. in your documentary, which was such an excellent coverage of the occult and the, the lie there, the deception that Satan drags you into using these systems. Because why? Because we realize that we can gain power and control. It's yes. not godly power and control, but it's control. And it's right. Satan using you. Uh, and I didn't know this. <clears throat> you know, I didn't know this at the time, but I was being dragged into these systems. I became very successful. I started a tarot business. I started making a lot of money doing this. And, and I know that Satan will use money as a means to really blind you as to what's really going on. Because you start thinking, well, if I can make money doing this, this must be a blessing from God. This must be a blessing. This must be a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's working. Therefore it must be good. And that's, that's another lie. We think just because something works, it must mean it's good. I didn't stop to really think what is the source of this power that I'm gaining. And I just went, you know, my research background, you know, I have a degree in journalism. I just went deeper and deeper and deeper. And I started researching more and more into these things. And it took me down the lines of Freemasonry, Egyptian initiation, all of these things. You know, I wrote that first book, but then I started getting invited to speak at conferences. So now I'm traveling America and I'm talking at conferences and their new age conferences. A lot of it was related to ufology, like UFOs, aliens, things like that. There's a very large Mm -hmm. community in America right now. And I know that this isn't anything new, but it's very, very popular right now. And it's this whole UFO community. And that's really what looped me really deep into this side of things was the deep conspiracy UFOs. Uh, It's all wrapped up in New Age beliefs as well. It's all this Mm -hmm. hybrid. And I got involved in a cult, basically, of people who are very powerful, very famous. And I just kind of the ocean swept me away into this land. and, And I was traveling with these people i was speaking at conferences with these people and before you knew it my life was in shambles and i know that this is a very long-winded answer because you were asking me how i eventually got pulled away from it and what happened was a lot of different things all at once and this was at the height of my career in uh new age world as you could call it, it was at the height of this career. I had just hosted a really big conference. There were 300 people there. There were hundreds of people on the live stream. And I was hosting this conference and it was just the best, right? You're like, oh, I've made it. You know, I'm running this. You have arrived. Yeah, you've arrived. It was one of those (laughs) moments you have arrived. And I remember going Uh home after this conference and thinking like, what next now? Like, and then I'm coming up with all these other ideas. It's always like more, more, more. Satan will loop you into these lives, this life that's just like, you want more. You're never satiated. You're never fulfilled. And I got a really strong word to stop and take pause. And I do believe that was the Lord, but I didn't listen. And I just kept going and slowly, but surely within that month, things just really started to crash around me. I was also, um, being, I was having demonic spirits manifest in front of me physically. I was being attacked in my dream state. I was being oppressed by demons. At this point, I didn't even know they were demons. I thought that I was being attacked by negative extraterrestrials, potentially. I didn't know what was going on. I thought some of them were spirits. I, I didn't know what I had gotten myself into, but it was very clear. It became very clear that because of the things I was doing, the practices that I was engaging in, I was opening myself up spiritually to just an onslaught of negative spirits. And it really hit home all at once. And I remember one night I was just in my bed crying in the fetal position, holding my Bible because I didn't know what was going on and I couldn't get these entities to leave. I remember just feeling like the only way I can describe it is mental rape. Like Mm -hmm. I could not get them out of my head and I, I just didn't feel like I had control. There were moments where I would lose control of my body and I, I was moving and doing things, but I wasn't aware 
of why and and it freaked me out clearly when you when your body is overtaken by a spirit and you don't know why you're doing something like obviously that's clear case for concern right and after so much of this you know you you just get to the point where you're like i feel like i'm going crazy and i'm in my bed and i'm in the fetal position i'm holding my bible and at that moment i felt completely alone i felt like i was in outer space i realized that because of the things that I was doing, I had been choosing against God. And it was at that very moment that I became aware of my sin. I became convicted of my sin for the first time in my life. And because of the things I had figured out about this cult that I was running with, these people that were lying and deceiving, I actually started to realize, God started to open my eyes to the lies that were happening. I discovered that these people were just lying to thousands of people to take their money so that they could continue doing what they were doing and living Mm -hmm. this deception and deceiving other people. And it just, it tore down my world because I thought that I was a truth seeker, but here I was surrounded by lies and it was in complete uh, opposition to what I stood for. And I couldn't handle the I couldn't handle the pressure and, and the Lord opened my eyes to the scriptures and, and I call, I remember that moment. It was like, I just called out to God, save me. And I remember him coming into my presence and it was like that moment was just God reaching out and grabbing me as a human being and just pulling me from the deepest, darkest pit of hell and started to show me the scriptures and started showing me strongholds and what that means. And, and I realized that I had strongholds of lies in my mind. A stronghold is like a building of lies. And you have one lie from Satan that you believe and you accept in your heart. And then another lie that you build on top of that and so on and so forth until you have these huge buildings of just lies in your mind. And God came in and just pulverized these lies all at once. And it was like the entire framework of my mind had just fallen out from underneath me. You you know what I call that? I I, I call (laughs) it a lie sandwich. I call it a (laughs) lie sandwich. You know, many times what happens is, is that, you know, uh, uh, the the outside appears to be truth on the surface. If if you look yes. at a hamburger, it has the bread on the outside, and <laughs> and it, maybe if the burger is so small, you may not be able to see the burger on the inside until you bite into it. That's when you get the meat, the mustard, the ketchup, the pickles, and stuff like that. But when you bite it, you assume that it's going to be a hamburger, right? You don't think it could be something else inside of that. Um, and, and so with the lie sandwich, you 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 bite into it thinking it's truth, but once you get on the inside. You realize it's a lie, Um, but sometimes it's too late. I thank God that it was not too late for you. Oh my goodness! And that God's grace that and that was God's grace that showed up into your life. God's grace, He graced you because He knew in your heart that's not what you wanted. You wanted the truth. You didn't want the devil. You didn't want deception. You want the truth. Um, And so God was was gracious enough to. But but there's a lot of people out there, and I'm sure you know them that 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 have not received that and they're still going strong yeah yeah it's it's hard i mean i and it was it wasn't like a one time just real quick oh you're delivered it this took a long time of making decisions on my part and then becoming receptive to what god is telling me it's it's a long process you know you talked about discernment and i i used to talk all about discernment like i knew all about discernment i didn't know anything about (laughs) discernment until the lord came into my life and was like oh you want to tell me about discernment let me tell you a little bit about discernment you know and but i did have to go live on my youtube channel i felt like i had to you know this was back in end of 2018 when all this went down and i said look this is what happened i am so sorry i was unintentionally deceiving you guys this stuff is very dangerous and i started speaking out against tarot and when i started to do that and you can go back and look at this live stream it's live it's actually on my youtube channel as soon as i start talking about tarot there is an audio interference that sounds like static that covers up what i'm saying until i stop talking about tarot and i had multiple people reach out and say Teresa, can you please do that video again because i had to turn it off i got a real bad headache when that static came on and so there was interference going on back then too and that was just step one because after that i had to i shut everything down i pulled down my tarot business i refunded all the money i uh, burned thousands of dollars worth of tarot cards and books and occult items and everything i just burned it all i got rid of just thousands of dollars worth of things and i ended up moving uh, away uh, out of the state for a while just to reground and you know read my bible and spend my time spend time with really good christians so you know so that i could just reset and 
learn what it was that God wanted to show me and so that I could listen. And, and that took a lot of time. It wasn't what, just what did all the people, thing. what did the people who you were connected with these, these very influential people who were involved in the occult and involved in new age, witchcraft and stuff like that. What did they say to you once you begin to turn that corner for Christ? What, what kind of reception did you get from them? Oh man. Well, I'm sure you know all about cults and people who try to leave cults. Mm -hmm. So I yes. mean, I was, I had death threats. I had people threaten my life. I had, um, you know, physical threats. I had stalkers. I had, I mean, people publishing lies about me. They, they tried to attack me and call me a plagiarist, which was totally false, false. They just went and made up whatever they could. And they basically destroyed my credibility and reputation with their hundreds of thousands of followers, uh, so that nobody would listen to me. And it was just crazy to me that that many people fell for it because it's like, don't you wonder why I'm so dangerous to these people? It's because I know they're full of it and they're lying to you. Um, right. But, yeah, it was not pretty and uh, it was actually horrible to go through. But I feel like I'm stronger for it. And I actually I understand a lot more about what cults are. And honestly, I didn't know that I had joined a cult until I left one. And all of the <laughs> things that were happening, I'm like, oh, this is cult abuse. And, you know, you don't see clearly when you're in something. A lot of times you have to get out of something before you can actually turn around and start to see it clearly. And that's definitely that was the case for me, for sure. Now, um, man, that, that, is, um, that is an amazing story. I think about um, when I was younger, I was probably around 20 years old, and I got involved in a cult, um, and this guy had rewrote the Bible, and, you know, he showed all the issues in the Bible, and Whoa. so he rewrote a Bible, removing all these indiscrepancies, and, mm -hmm. and, of course, he was talking about aliens. He was talking about all this stuff, and he had built pyramids and mm -hmm. had all this land with pyramids built on it and had all these texts that, that you would read and stuff like that. And, and, and he was tied in with a lot of rappers during that time. Mm -hmm. And so all the young people who would listen to rap music would hear his name. And so they would seek true knowledge from him. Mm -hmm. And I got caught up in it for a moment. Um, and But just like you recognize the lies, I started to see the lies and the deception um, that was tied to it. But there were many who, who never saw the deception and they hung on to the lie. Yeah. Um, but just like you, I grew up in, in a Christian church. Um, I grew up, you know, just thinking about God and Jesus. I mean, that, that was the life I knew. Of course, I didn't have any, any strong foundation. And that's one thing I realized a lot of Christians go around this life and they don't really have a strong foundation in Christ. They don't really understand the word. They don't have a revelation for the things of the spirit. They don't have discernment. And so when the enemy comes as divisively and as sneakily as he does come, um, we're not prepared to deal with the onslaught. Absolutely. And so can, can you speak on some of the pitfalls you believe that Christians fall into 100. when they encounter this type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and when you have such a deep experience with uh, demonic vexation and oppression, all of those things like I have and you have, you know, when you've seen it, you can see the uh, you can see the influence of Satan in a different kind of way. But I think that um, Christians that I've noticed and since, you know, all of this happened, I went to seminary. I'm still uh, enrolled at seminary. I'm taking the theology classes and women's uh, ministry classes. So I'm around a lot of Christians there and I'm around a lot of Christians at my church and all this. And I find that what it kind of comes down to is the American culture that we live in and making concessions for the culture. And I see this in um, destructive feminism that's just there to completely break down the uh, familial structure, to break down the nuclear family, to break down the, the, the male and female bond that is supposed to be perfected through Christ, those kinds of things. And I think also a personal relationship with Christ is different than just saying, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. There's a totally different um, thing when you're actually in relationship with Christ because there's a sanctification process that's happening like you were saying through the spirit mm -hmm. it's a consistent thing that you have to uh, consistently be renewing your mind you have to be spending time in your Bible and allowing you need to be sitting there constantly having that in the back of your mind that God is there with you having you know you're walking with God and what you what I mean by that is you're actually constantly in a framework of mind to be receptive to what he has to tell you and what he's showing you and 
always just trying to be graceful in the moment when you're going through your life, you know, and I, and I think that for Christians and I'm not, you know, on my high horse here on a soapbox because, you know, I'm going through this every day as well. I think that we can get, start getting broken down, especially now because of the stress that we're under because of society. Mm -hmm. And so we start to uh, listen to the lies of Satan and think, oh, I can't handle this. And we try to carry the weight of the world. This is a big problem I have trying to carry that weight of the world. And we're not built as humans to carry the weight of the world. That's not what we're here to do. The whole thing we're supposed to be doing is, try, is learning to be better Christians and giving those burdens over to Christ to carry those for us. We're supposed to have a, a not heavy burden here. And when we try to do, we try to control and manipulate that is that is tapping into these lies of Satan, letting them control us instead of going, you know what? I don't have to do that because Christ has already won. I don't have to figure right. all this out because God has a plan. And that's something that um, I have to talk about a lot on my YouTube channel is this trusting in the plan. There is a greater plan. God is the foundational plan. We have a divine plan. And, and that for me, when I first came into Christianity, was huge. Learning about foundations and learning about God's plan for us. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, listening to you talk, um, it, it really blesses me because all the things you're saying is the proper way for your form, your spirit to be formed. Um, and, and one of the things I do as a minister of Christ and even in church ministry, dealing with people in the church aspect and trying to disciple them and stuff like that, is I try to properly form their spirit. Um, but many times what happens is, especially someone like yourself that came out of the occult, uh, many times their spirituality becomes a hodgepodge of the new age, the occultic practices they came out of, and now Christianity. Um, they aren't able to let go of some things. They may let go of some things, but some things they're still holding on to. And so when, when you're trying to reach to, to spiritually form somebody brand new as the Holy Spirit is renewing them, you're trying to teach them, you know, they're holding on to occult things. They're holding on to new age practices and stuff like that. And so it blessed me to listen to you talk because it sounds like God did a full remake of you. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you brought this up because I have to say when I came back online after this year of taking a year and a half of completely just leaving the internet, I came back online and I did try to do that whole, okay, well, my whole audience is new age. Let me try to say these things in a way that's not going to offend. Right. And so I start to, right. I start to try to open things up into the gray area. Right. And what I realized, oh man, the Holy spirit came down on me so hard. I got a slap in the face for that. <laughs> I, it, it lasted maybe a few months and then the Holy spirit was just like, girl, no, like hardcore. I mean, I, right. I was like, oh my gosh. And I realized I had this um, realization that I was, I was sacrificing the integrity of the gospel. Whoo, child. When that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, I am, oh man, I'm sorry. And I had to turn back around and go, okay. And so I have to say, to be completely honest with you, it took time for me as far as like letting go of the divination, all that, like mainly like that was all fine. Um, and then I did have one weakness where I found a tarot deck, you know, and I, and I pulled it out and I'm looking at it. And then I'm like, I, I struggled with that for like a week. And then I'm like, no, you know, this is not, I know the dangers of this. I know this is wrong and I threw it away, you know? And so you do have to go through that process of like sanctification where you're going, where you're sussing it out again. You're, you're coming back in, you're going, okay, what do things, these things really mean to me? And you're allowing God to come in and correct those things. So I, I have to say like, I wasn't, at, I wasn't perfect at first. And I, I tried to kind of, uh, T you know, talk about scripture in talking about this universal Christ idea, which is new age. And then I realized it was new age and wrong. And I'm like, Oh no, I can't talk about that. And so it, it took a little bit of time, but now I can confidently say, I mean, once it hit me really, really hard, I'm just like, you know what? I cannot make, I can't talk about these gray areas. There are things that are not gray areas. And a lot of this new age stuff, they try to pull you off of sin that's the main thing. They try to say, oh, well, nothing's really a sin. They try to confuse you about sin. It's like, no, we have a sin problem, right. period. Another right. thing is right. uh, Christ. Why did Christ have to die? You know, oh, did he really, was he, was he just a prophet? No, 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 no. We have to talk about who Jesus is. He is God. He came down. He lived a perfect life. He died and rose again for us. And in that, and our faith in him, that's how we are saved. That is how we are sanctified because only then 
does this whole, the Holy Spirit do its work in us? And, and Absolutely. we can't sacrifice that. If we sacrifice that, we're not theologically sound. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I went to seminary, because I was like, I need to correct these things. I want to know the truth. I want to be theologically sound so I can go write my second book and correct what the heck I published. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> To undo. Now, isn't it amazing how ambition can cause you to do things that you regret? Oh, yeah. Even to the point of publishing and publicly speaking. Now you're talking the opposite of what you professed before. 100%. And I think it's crazy because if you go and you read my first book, there's a sentence in there that says, Jesus is the way. And for some reason, I could not take that sentence out of my book. And I kept, I would just pass over it when in my editing process. I would just pass over it. And it didn't make any sense with the rest of my book, but I left it in there. And it was published that way. And it's so funny looking back. And it's like, mm -hmm, there's a reason why that sentence made it into my book. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing that happens with a lot of people, especially as yourself. You're obviously gifted uh, um, in, in, in the arenas that God wants to use you in. And as a purpose that you went through all this, many times what Satan does is he identifies a person early in life that is a threat to his kingdom. And so he either destroys them or he promotes them, but promotes them in a defiled way yeah. to hopefully lead. Same, same, thing, same thing he did with Adam and Eve in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He tried to defile God's creation um, and bring a curse upon them. Um, and so it seems like that's what Satan did. He identified the gifts in you. And then try to to insert unrighteous things before you got to a place where you could discern the truth and, and, and begin to promote you, begin to send people, send money, send success and all these things so that you really have no reason to doubt that you were on the right track. 100%. Um, but I thank God. It happened yeah, so fast. It was like it, you can't even imagine how fast it happened. It was just like money, fame people all the it was so fast that you you just get on this this train and you're just going and going and going and you don't even have time to stop and think but I will tell you after I you know after I realized what was going on and I I stopped and I came against it and everything broke down Satan did try to kill me it was like an onslaught right. of demonic activity I fled the state where I was living I moved to the country and even then I got in a really bad car accident almost died in a car accident it was like just spiritual warfare to the max. I have, I have witnessed and experienced so much spiritual warfare in my life that when I go and I, you know, watch your documentary, I read these books about spiritual warfare and deliverance ministry. I'm like, I get it. Yep. No doubt in my mind. I've seen so much that there is no doubt. There are certain things about my Christian faith that I will not be rocked on just because I've experienced it. And I've seen the power, the healing power of Christ. And I've been delivered. I've literally been delivered from the dominion of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, period. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that we're, we're fighting a war. And I, and I try to, you know, uh, being once again, being in church ministry and trying to lead people from the pulpit and minister them from the pulpit in the church environment. There are a lot of churches out here that are that are uh, preaching a, a false gospel from the aspect that they're not they're not giving people the revelation for the true battle we're in. They're ministering to people in a way that everything is great. We're good. God's pouring out his blessings. We, you know, we don't have room enough to receive it, you know, and, and but it's not telling people that the other aspect that we're dealing with. And that's the battle with Satan. And so people aren't really equipped properly to deal with what we're in. This earth is not our, our resting place or our final state. Uh, we're here for a season and we're here to overcome, you know, what I'm saying by the blood of the lamb and then go and then reign with Christ forever. That's the reason why we're here. Nothing else. There's really no other reason for this life other than to overcome by the blood of the lamb and reign with Christ forever. Yeah. Everything else is is and help other people do the same thing. 100%. That's why we're here. And, and Satan is even, like I said, convinced the church to kind of twist that up a little bit. So people are just unaware. I've had people come to me um, and when they hear me teaching about these types of things, they may come from large ministries and they, and they say, well, I've never heard this type teaching before. You know, because and the reason why the reason why I usually tell them is because it's inconvenient. It's not convenient for church growth, for for your church to prosper from a attendance standpoint. It's not convenient to talk about things that are behind this. There's a reason why they're behind the scenes. They're ugly. Satan he doesn't want you to know the real uh, state that we're in right now. 
Um, and so he tries to do it behind the scenes. And, and if he can convince you that nothing's wrong, even if you have the authority to fight, if you don't know there's danger, then you're not going to fight. And that's what he's done to most of the church. And that's why we're in this, the, the world is in the situation it's in. Absolutely. And it's uncomfortable. And that's what I find with a lot of people who are still in the new age. And they look at my content and they're like, what the heck is she talking about? This is evil and dangerous. She has no clue what she's talking about. They think Christianity is the lo-fi version of what's going on because they think that they're, they have all the answers because they are universalists, but they're the ones that aren't stopping to think about the things that they're doing with their bodies and their hands. Our bodies are temples, and when we are worshiping idols, it is not what God intended for us. We are not supposed to worship the things of this planet, and there that is going on so much that when you call it out, and you talk about spiritual warfare, it's, like you said, inconvenient. It's uncomfortable. I recently made a YouTube video about the spirit of Jezebel, talked about how she came against me uh, when I started speaking out against false prophets and idolatry. I lost over 100 subscribers when I made that video because I said, look, I'm not going to budge on this. If you're in the new age and you're doing these practices, I'm, I'm just telling you right now, it's, you're not supposed to be doing it. That's not what God intended. I'm not going to budge on this. If you're going to talk about these things like dabbling in the occult is acceptable and fine because you don't think there's an issue with it, you can take that conversation somewhere else, but you're not going to have it on this channel. And I just invited people to unsubscribe right. because I'm not going to budge on these things. And I agree with you. It's it's People don't want to have to step out of their comfort zone and approach these things if they're feeling comfortable in their lives. It is uncomfortable. Right, right, right. And it's interesting you say that. You're, you're dealing with people on the other side who are, you know, you're telling them that these things are evil and they're unsubscribing. Well, how about Christians when you try to reveal things to them and they're unsubscribing because the message is not quote uplifting enough for them. Um, so, so, so you get, you get, you get the unsubscribers on both sides. Either you're not as positive, quote positive as they think you ought to be, or, you know, you, you're, you're, you're too negative. You know, I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're too negative for the, for the new agers. You know, you're talking against their stuff. Well, it, you know, you ought to be receptive of it. And it's so sad yeah. because Jesus Christ is the pow most powerful being that we that has ever lived. And, and he goes into that darkness and transforms it. And it's like, you want to talk all butterflies and rainbows and stuff. It's like, Jesus is the crunkest dude that goes in and like breaks right. apart the darkness and it's like man the, what he exactly. can carry it's like it's it baffles me like who who christ actually is and the power he actually has it blows me away blows me away wow absolutely absolutely so tell us about um i'll tell you what i i, I know we don't have long on this podcast today i'm definitely going to have you back on and probably even do a video podcast with you um, tell us about the show. I know you said you had a show and you had a lot of subscribers and you kind of re you, you, you disappeared for a little bit. You relaunched. Tell us about your programming and what you have going on right yeah, now. So I have a YouTube channel. It's just my name, Teresa Yanaris. It was divine frequency. And I realized I had to switch that branding over because I think it was just confusing people because it sounds kind of new agey. So I just switched it over. It's yeah. Teresa Yanaris. Um, I mean, you can still find my blog content on the divine frequency.com. There's some great blog content because ultimately I'm a journalist and I investigate new media. I talk a lot about um, all different kinds of things online. I'm looking for the deeper message, what lies underneath the surface. So I do a lot of covering destructive feminism, what's happening in the mainstream media, and what's really going on. And so I have a team of authors. Uh, my new blog is called trulyfreesociety.com. I have opportunities for guest authorship as well so sometimes i run uh campaigns where if you're a writer and you want to be featured on a blog you can come in and submit content and so we do all kinds of different things there and we create multimedia so we're all writers but then we'll also create videos so if you go to my youtube channel you can see see that i do uh, interviews and things like that as well so those are kind of my main platforms but you can also find me on twitter okay awesome awesome well i i'm so excited and i, I can't I can't wait to, to, to see everything that God is going to do in your ministry. And God is going to be using you in so, so many great ways. And, and even to go against the darkness, um, I tell you what, the insight you have because you were in the life and now you've come out of it is just powerful. And people need to hear that because there's some people out there that are just absolutely trapped 
and they don't know how to escape or they they've created this hodgepodge type of a relationship with God and they, and they're confused and, and they just you know or whatever. So I thank God for you. I thank God for the work God is doing with you. Um, people of God who are listening right now, this is an awesome woman of God. Make sure that you follow her. Um, make sure that you reach out to her. If you have any questions about the occult, if you have any questions about the new age, you know, um, if you have a relative or even yourself is, is t- entangled in it and you want to speak to somebody about how do I get free? She's definitely someone that you can get in contact with. Well, anyway, um, that's been the kingdom authority podcast for the day. My name is James Alfred. Thank you so much for joining and we will definitely see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Authority Podcast. Join us every week for powerful teachings, insightful interviews, and testimonies of God's power. To contact us for more info on books and articles from James Alford, make sure you go to jamesalford.org.